Hi, Scottish Mudlarkin here, it's Craig here and Nicole behind the camera. Today we've come back to the Tay because the last time we were here we only got so far along this coast, um, this little piece of foreshore, uh, before we had to kind of turn back because the tides were coming in so you might have seen us having a run off the beach. We've come back to this beach today because the last time we were here we found more agates than we'd found pretty much anywhere else. So today then, we're on the hunt for agates and particularly the beautiful little red carnelians that we find here. Huge thanks to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. Um, thank you too to everybody who's left us lovely comments. It's, it's really great. It means a huge deal to us. Thanks too to everybody who's liked the videos. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And an extra special big thanks to everyone who's helped support us through Kofi. You're amazing. Thank you. Exactly what we're looking for. See how many of these we can find. Really small one here as well. Just found another one over here. Such pretty little things. Oh, oh hang on. Is that a fossil? I think it might be. Okay, do you want to maybe show it to the camera? Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a wee look. I don't know anything about fossils, but I think it's a fossil. There's some imprints in there. Just try and hold that a wee bit steady, please. Okay, yeah, I think there's definitely some kind of imprints in there. Something on the other side as well. So, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know about that side. The other side looks good. Mm. But there are some odd markings on there. It could be score marks. Mm. If anybody can identify this. Please get in touch. So, how are we doing then with our hunt? We're doing pretty well actually. We found a couple of kind of orangey bits and some clear bits of uh, agates or canalian, whatever you want to call them. Um, and it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, let's have a wee peek at that. Oh, okay, there's some nice ones there. Yeah, they're really, really pretty. I think we'll, we'll find enough to fill a couple of those tiny little bottles. I saw another one, yeah, just up in front of me here. Excuse the camera movement. This other one just lying here, it's a really nice one, quite big. A little bigger than what we are looking for, I think, these ones. We'll take them, I'm sure there's something we can do with them, but we're looking for little, little tiny ones that we can use to fill little jars. Just like this one here. Oh, you found some nice ones. Found this one, and you can see layers on that. Yeah. Yeah, they're very cool. They're very pretty, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're really pretty. Found a few nice ones here. That one looks as if it's been polished in the sea. It's really pretty. Can't actually see it properly, sorry. I'm in the shade. There's another one just off to this side. Pop that there. We're finding a lot of these here, but it's actually quite unusual. We've been in quite a lot of locations, and we just haven't found the kinds, kinds of numbers of these things that we're finding here. Pretty much anywhere else that we've been. Just realised I nearly left this little nugget of glass behind. I don't want to leave nice things behind, even if we are just looking for these little agates. So lovely. Let's see, yeah, this looks quite safe just now, but no, we'll be stuck the minute we get up there. I've never seen anything quite this big. No. What could it be? Oh, it's got lots of holes in it. 
It looks like a giant's belt. <laughs> Another clay pipe? I can't believe it! Oh, that's really cool. So that's number three. Yeah! <laughs> Let's yeah. have a wee look at that. Let's yeah, it looks different. It looks more like, um, well, it's got two different colours. Ah, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that looks like it might have been burnt there. Yeah, or maybe that's the mouthpiece. You see, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, it's burnt here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Maybe it was in the fire. Yeah. Well, they were disposable items, clay pipes, eh? They were indeed. They were indeed. That's cool. very cool. <laughs> oh, wow. I think I've just seen something of uh, one of Nicole's favourite items to find. And Nicole hasn't found it. She's just about to walk on top of it, though. But I'm not going to tell her exactly where it is. Can you see it? I think you can see okay, but I'm going to grab it because it's mine. I saw it first. <laughs> it's this. We found a bottle stop. Uh -huh, cool. That's very cool. This is one of these ones. Uh, we found one of these. Where was that? Was that Leaven? Yeah. I think we found uh -huh. one of these at Leaven. Yeah. We found another one here. This one looks like it's still got the metal, oh. or it's still a little bit of the rusted metal you can see there yeah. inside the top. There's no rubber seal. It's quite shiny. Yeah. Um, I'm hold it. Oh. That's cool. There's writing on this. I don't know if you can see the writing here. How does it I'll say? try and bring this into the light so we can have a closer look at that. I think, I don't know if you can see this. Can you, I don't know if you can focus in on that, just if you can't the screen. I think that's an R, O, B, B, and, and I think that's Sun. R O B B Rob and Sun. All right. So it still has the metal part in there, but because we have a company name on this one, we can maybe do a bit of search on that and find out where this might have come from. Yeah. Rob and Sun appear in two listings in the Dundee Business Directory for 1809 to 1912, where they're noted to be manufacturers of aerated water. Technically, aerated water is any water that has been agitated by forcing air through the water. This is often done to remove impurities like sulphur or radon. It's more likely though that Rob and Son were producers of carbonated drinks, soda or fizzy pop. The fact that we found a swing top cap suggests the liquid contained in the bottle was likely carbonated. Of the two addresses registered for Rob and Son, one is in Exchange Street, a very central location in Dundee, close to the main shopping and business areas of the city. It may be that Unlike many other purveyors of aerated products who distributed their products through bars and the like, Robinson had their own store there. The other address is in North Street, an area that today still has old, small-scale industrial buildings. It may be that this was their manufacturing, storage and or distribution building, but I speculate. In any case, with two business addresses in the city, Robinson must have been doing quite well for themselves, unsurprising really given how popular carbonated drinks were in the Victorian period. Schweppes first invented the machinery to carbonise water in the 1790s. The machine worked by forcing carbonic acid into water under pressure. Realising that gas escaped through porous earthenware bottles, Schweppes turned to the torpedo design invented by William Hamilton in 1840. Though there were other forms of bottle and capping technologies that emerged to meet the needs of carbonated drinks. Thanks to these technological advances, we can say that the swing top we found today came from a bottle made sometime after 1874. The technology that Schweppes had invented was so novel that he chose to exhibit his machine and the drinks he produced at the great exhibition that took place in London in 1851. Schweppes paid the grand sum of £5,500, which is around three quarters of a million pounds in today's money, just to take part in the exhibition. In addition to sponsoring the exhibition, this money bought Schweppes display space and it gave his company exclusive rights to sell refreshments during the event. History is a testament to just how wise Schweppes' 1851 investment was. Schweppes is now the name in carbonated drinks. The Victorian fad for fizzy drinks provided Robinson a lucrative business and the desire for fizzy drinks has stuck with us through to today. Nicole's just found something else. I can tell because she made a happy noise. <laughs> uh, oh, it, and it says uh, the tasty meat time twins, SP sauce and ketchup. Oh, it's nice. 
this is yours. Okay, do you want to put... Oh, whoa! It's yeah, yeah, I can see it already. Uh-huh. It's a half top. Yeah. Is there any writing on that? Oh, no, no we can't see anything. A, yeah, so that's we can see where, inside though, yeah. but that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's where the metal rod would have uh -huh. gone, I guess. Yeah. How cool, cool. is that? Two in one bay. <laughs> no, this big chunky piece here. Alright. That has an internal uh, screw as well. Uh -huh. yeah. So again, we keep talking about vulcanite stoppers, but that's the kind of bottle top that a vulcanite stopper would have screwed into. <laughs> Very cool find. Yeah. 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 And I think hands when the sun hits them, they just glisten a really beautiful red. Yeah. It looks to me like Nicole's managed to make it around here, so I should be able to now. The water's come down just enough to let us by. Yeah. yeah, I love a bit of milk glass. <laughs> awesome. Ah, that's an interesting piece. The cool thing is with this one, you can actually see the pumice stone at this end and the agate or carnelian at that end. With this one, it's much more fused in and throughout the stone. Hmm, that's really cool. That's really cool. We've found a few like that before. They're really nice. Yeah, they're great. I can see something. What? Just down oh. there. I can see that too. <laughs> We're always, this is the worst thing about sea glassing or uh, beach combing or mud larking is that even when you're looking at one object, you're constantly looking out for the next one. Uh -huh. And if it's and so if it's lovely, blue, then <laughs> it just catches the eye. Yeah. That's nice. Now and again, just walking around here finding these really small ones and then you look up and you see this just a row of these things absolutely gorgeous so pretty it's like a breadcrumb trail yeah <laughs> so this is as far as we got up this foreshore the last time we were here so we're going to go beyond that outcrop of a volcanic rock there and see what we can find I do collect these, so if you're wondering why I'm so excited, it's uh, one for my collection. I'll show you, they're really big. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever wondered what a horse or cow tooth looked like, that's... Well, I'm not sure which it is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's a bovine tooth or maybe yeah. a horse tooth. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think there's some lettering on this one as well. It's a nice piece of... Uh, Oh no, it's not. It's got a little crack in it, which has made it a little bit shiny. Ah. But it's still a beautiful shade of blue. Yeah. Let's have a wee look at that. Ah. that so, because we found a couple of agates last time we were here, we thought we'll bring a little bottle along and we'll see if we can fill that with the uh, small agates that we found. They're really nice. They are the lovely dinky wee things. Yeah. Can get through that one. Uh -huh. That's very cool. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So that's our little bottle filled. Let's put the cork on it. And there we have it. A little bottle full of Scottish agates collected on the tea today. Lovely. <laughs> okay, so that's us for today. I'd just like to say a huge thanks to everybody for subscribing. Uh, please leave us a comment and take like if you can as well. That would be much, much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Bye.